Hey friends, welcome to another episode of Mastering Post-Production Sound. My name is Joel, I'm a sound recording mixer, sound supervisor, I've been part of the post-production sound industry for the past 16 years, and I'm here to help you navigate the sometimes murky waters of the post-production sound industry. I am so thrilled. Today we start a new series. I am so honored to have a conversation with my good colleague, friend, my brother, Jeffrey J. Habush, a four-time Oscar-nominated sound re-recording mixer. I've had the distinct honor and privilege to work alongside Jeff for the past eight years. And for me, it's like a mini masterclass every single time we work together. But today, we're going to dive into some of the core principles that I teach and how they've been applied in his life, how he's seen them show up in his own career. He's had a story career. You've seen so many of the projects that he has worked on, from the films to, most recently, the TV shows. So it is my distinct honor to have Jeffrey J. Habush today on today's Mastering Post-Production Sound episode. Have you ever read your Wikipedia introduction about you? I have never. Okay. You know? Jeffrey J. Habush is an American sound engineer. He has been nominated for four Academy Awards in the category of Best Sound Mixing. He has worked on more than 150 films since 1983. He won a day daytime Emmy in 1989 for Outstanding Film Mixing, uh, Sound Mixing in his work, My Babies. Did you write that or did somebody else write that for you? I don't know. I don't know, but it will. Be <laughs> How do you can, like it? Are we fact checking it? 150 well, titles? Is that better? I think what we could do is we can actually update that. We can one up it because it's actually over 180 films. Oh, probably 200, uh, over 200 television streaming uh, uh, episodes and shows. I love it. I so love a it. lot of hours of mixing. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, Jeffrey J. Habush. My guy is here today on this episode, and I'm so honored and just proud to know him. Jeff and I have worked together for the last eight years, and for me, I feel like it's always like a little master class. It's always this constant learning, and Jeff's career, his, his story career goes back, what, 30 years or more? Um, no, 30. No. 1979. 79? That's 44? No. 79? Are you serious, Boosh? 79. Uh, that's, that's Boosh, I was born in 79. So I'm, that's 44 years ago. <laughs> all, it all started on the corner of Hollywood Way and Verdugo in beautiful downtown Burbank. Well, not oh. downtown. Beautiful Burbank. Beautiful Burbank. <laughs> I love it. Well, Jeff... Thank you for being here. I know we've talked about this for a long time, so we're finally making making it happen here on the uh, Mastering Post-Production YouTube channel. Um, so thanks for taking time. I want to just introduce you to, you know, my small audience of aspiring sound professionals. You know, we have not only aspiring sound designers, but sound, you know, sound recording mixers, supervisors, people who just love audio. If you do not know this man's work and let me just tell you you know his work trust me you have seen everything this man has got his fingers on so go go check it out but um i just want to give you a second to kind of share a little bit of how, how you got started in the industry why sound and what it's been like for you um over this gosh 40 years 40 40 yeah. plus years yeah um, you know, I, I consider myself a very lucky and fortunate person. I'm very grateful. Um, I was brought up pretty well by a couple really cool parents, Richard and Yvette. Uh, my father was in the um, commercial business in the 60s and 70s. Yeah. They had a lot of really cool campaigns. And uh, when I was a kid, I'd go there um, and water the plants and steal props and roam his <laughs> office and sit in the stage. And, you know, it was a little taste of Hollywood. And that company, the Habush Company, was located on Santa Monica Boulevard between Highland and Cahuenga, mm. still you know, very close to the middle of Hollywood. Um, my father was doing a commercial one day in 1978-ish, and he went to do this commercial at a facility called B&B Sound Studios. Right. And the boss was really a great guy. His name was Ken Berger. God rest his soul, the late Ken Berger. His son, Howard, is still in Howard the in his makeup, uh, K&B effects. Uh, my father asked Ken if he had any 
positions open at the uh, facility. Mm. For, at that time, I was just barely making it through high school, North Hollywood High. I was working at a gas station in deep North Hollywood. And um, my dad said, hey, Jeffrey, this guy wants to see if you can, you know, maybe be a projectionist. Ah. I said, dad, the only projector I've ever loaded right. is the Super 8 projector when we're showing our home movies at home. Right, right. Just taking a little piece of Super 8 film putting it through this little projector and yeah some people don't know what super 8 is you know <laughs> no, super 8 screen on a sheet that you put That's up great. in your uh, living room on the wall and uh you know and then it, we'd watch my mom's shaky camera work um <laughs> and that was the only projection so i walked into this facility scared to death but mm. at 18 years old i was sort of not, you know not heading down the right path but i just met this really awesome girl named sandy and sandy was sort of straightening me out and i just said okay i'm gonna go for sandy well i was going for me too <laughs> i walked in i told the guy i go oh yeah i know the little projectors oh yeah i got all this i got this oh stuff. i love it i love it and he hired me so but you didn't know how to right you didn't know you just said sure I didn't know. film a sound <laughs> i, I love it nothing man oh, zero. zero zero mm -hmm. zero zero just I was working at fricking the gas station pumping gas. And before that, I was cooking hot dogs at Der Wiener Schnitzel on Magnolia and Laurel. I was really good at cooking dogs and pumping gas. But, <laughs> so anyway, well, so for I, our sake, we're glad you transitioned from hot dogs to, to sound mixing. <laughs> so when I, I went there and there was a, uh, a sound mixer engineer, really, really good man named Warren Kleinman. Uh, and Warren sort of took, took me under his wing. And he saved my life of getting fired. He set, saw a little potential in me. He showed me how to thread the projector. And the, when I say projector, I'm talking about a 35 millimeter uh, giant right. carbon arc projector. Carbon arc is the way the yeah. light is created. There's no xenon bulbs. There's no light bulbs. There's no none of that. It's a freaking these arcs, these these long pencil arcs that have tons of energy that go through them. Touch them and you pull them apart, and they create an arc of a flame that is reflected off a mirror, and they last for 20 minutes. Yeah. At the time, film reels were 20 minutes long. Uh, I actually have a film reel on the wall, and that's being blocked <laughs> by this whatever. <laughs> but film is what yeah. you put on the projector. That's what I learned how to thread. And besides learning how to thread the picture, I learned how to thread all the audio, which at the time was single stripe audio, mm -hmm. edited by a sound editor on a moviola. Mm -hmm. The recording film was a uh, full full coat magnetic uh, analog oxide wow. recording film. Yeah. But that on a recorder that had three heads, dialogue, music, and sound effects, three separate heads. It had an erase head, a record head, and a playback head. Yeah, don't hit erase. <laughs> no, well, the erase is a If you're in record, it's erasing anything that's before. Then you record it on the second head, and the third head plays it back. So you actually could record and listen to playback at the same time. Mm -hmm. With digital, mm -hmm. there's confidence heads and everything, but you're always listening to input. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I learned all about the recorder. This this awesome gentleman Warren taught me how to thread machines. He 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 took me. We 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 were became good friends. I learned how to um, record on quarter inch, one inch, two inch. Record uh, live microphones that we recorded cartoons at this facility. But the mixing stage and being a mix tech, starting from mm -hmm. the bottom as a mix yeah. tech, and you could say way bottom, uh, was something, again, that I was so grateful for because I got to learn on the job. It's very rare mm -hmm. that that happens. That's a lot good. Of right. Go to schools and learn right. how to right. do these things, but to, to get a job and to get a paycheck. And just another sidebar on this um, sort of interesting beginning of my life sound journey uh, about uh, 10 months a year into me working at B&B Sound Studios, um, I think it was less. It might have been like eight months, whatever. Mm -hmm, the boss mm -hmm. comes in and he goes, tomorrow, you guys wear, wear a nice shirt, and we're joining the IATSE, the IATSE. International yeah. Alliance of Theatrical and Stage Employees, the IA. You're joining the union. You're joining the union. Sign them up. And I had no idea what he was talking about. It's the local 695 at the time. Now we're in the local 700. I've been a proud member of the local, the IOTC for 40 plus years. Yeah. Um, so we came in and uh, there was union dudes there and we had to put our Did right you have to swear in, right? <laughs> swear in and we swore in and I became a 
why nine recorded? Mm -hmm. I think the, right. uh, the, the recordist uh, classifications are still sort of the same, but yeah. the minute that happened, my pay tripled oh. I had insurance. I belong to this like group society, yeah. not this made. brotherhood and sisterhood, right? I like that. <laughs> Yeah. Um, I was a union guy, man, and I mm. loved it and uh, got to do different union jobs. And uh, so B&B &B is where it all began. And then just a quick fast forward, Warren moved back to Philadelphia because that's where he was from. And his wife wanted to raise his children there. And I was given the opportunity to mix. Ah, they were going through the union roster looking for mixers. They were looking for guys because I was mm. just the reportist. I was 20 freaking three years old i think wow. 23 or something like that 20 and 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 i said hey you want can i do it and the, my guy goes well if you're gonna do it you gotta freaking commit you have to mm. really really okay. want to do this I you have it. to be motivated you have to just give 150 mm. percent I'm like, oh, but it's kind of cool to sit in the back room and eat sandwiches and mess around. <laughs> I don't want to have to work hard. <laughs> yeah, I get to take naps. Um, <laughs> talk on the phone. And they said, well, that's all gone if you want to do this. Mm, so anyway, they interviewed a handful of mixers. They had a hard time running the equipment at BNB. I had mm. been there for years. I had the equipment wired. I had learned how to. So you they gave it. me a shot with one of mm -hmm. our clients. And I'll never forget, it was my first mix with this client, Chris Arnold, Cimarron Productions. <laughs> and he came in and I mixed a trailer. Trailers uh, are cool. Trailers are great education because you got the narrator in a, in a world. In a world. Uh, yeah, yeah. Hey, man, we're going to be getting out of here. And then you got the music and just rocking. And then you got right. some quick sound effects. Boom, that. So trailers are like fast. They happen in yeah. two minutes. So you have to have yes. it together and you have to punch in in between things. And at the time, this was all no automation. No automation, and yes analog you got to punch you got to remember what you're doing you can't hesitate and uh i mixed the trailer that they booked an hour and a half i think for the job yeah three and a half hours later <laughs> I finished and chris said to me he goes uh ah, one day you may be a good mixer ah <laughs> and i'll never forget that moment too because okay. the emotions that were in my body the mm. feeling of sickness in my stomach of screwing up with like a freaking grown up and mm. I'm going, that's it. I'm never going to get to mix again. I just mm. blew my one chance. And the boss said, no, nah, it's all right. I'll do another trail, another one. And you get another shot, kid. Yeah. Another shot. They started doing some cartoons, cartoons, man, animation, some of the best stuff to mix. What some best education. Everything's mm. happening all at once. Music's right. going, sound effects. Boop, boop, boop. Boy, yeah, a lot of stuff. Talking. And you have to pack it all in to one package. You have to hear everything. Yeah. And so that was a great experience. And then um, getting the opportunity to start mixing some low budget films. Mm. So B, C, D, F, <laughs> movies, uh, every, every type, yes. Every type. It's fantastic, man. I got to horror movies, bikini girl contest movies, <laughs> yeah. cars and rock yeah. and roll. Everything. I Most love disgusting, it. gross, like heads being chopped off with the blood squirting. <laughs> oh. and, then, uh, and I'm just like, hey, this is fun. Uh, so, uh, <laughs> yeah, but again, great education. And uh, I from bet, there, I, bet. I, I met another fellow mixer who moved on to a different facility, moved to Warner Hollywood Studios. And uh, Warner Hollywood, Goldblum Sound at the time, was a <laughs> amazing campus. And uh, that was my next level, leaving the, a, the, the CD and E movies. Yeah opportunity to work on some a films and that's kind of where it kind of all got to the next level of the next level and yeah. that was a great spot to get to because it, from there you can just keep going forward hopefully Knock on I, I, I love it well it's good and uh, thanks for kind of sharing a little bit about your background we'll get a little more into the 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 um the film stuff uh, the next level stuff you know one thing that i do and i know we've talked about this in the past you know one thing that i I feel has I've had a calling to in this in our space is to kind of give encouragement to young aspiring sound uh, professionals and in the process of because we both have you know had our journey we've learned things along the way we have our start there are basically five core principles that I like to share and tell people about and, and it sounds like there's already just hearing your story and you know I know what you've gone through uh there some you probably resonate with a couple of them but um the five being curiosity hard work credibility 
persistence and patience, and relationships. Those five core principles have, in my belief, I believe we all in the post-production sound industry go through this process of, hey, curiosity being the fact that, hey, it, it's what spurs our learning, our growth. It's like in the beginning stages. Oh, what does this do? How does this? Oh, okay, don't do that. You know, whether it's le you learning back in the day, uh, me in my early days of learning Pro Tools, to then understanding that, hey, hard work, you have to put your head down at work, right? How many years have we spent honing our craft? And then obviously credibility being the fact that nobody knows us. We have to gain credibility in this industry. You know, sometimes it's building credits, it's working with different people, then you build a reputation. And then obviously understanding that through the process of time, you know, there's ups and downs of the industry. And then understanding that relationships are huge in this industry. This is what Hollywood runs off of relationships, right? Who knows who, who you know. Of those five core principles, would you say that you recognize that in your career you've at least faced those, you know, understanding like, hey, I started from somewhere and look at where I'm now. Which one of those principles do you believe you resonate with, you identify with as far as, you know, uh, those five? Any of those? All of them, but the one all thing I'll say – the, no, they're all great, great points. They're all great points to build on, to study, to uh, try to make happen. Mm. Uh, the one thing, the curiosity part, even in my twilight years, I'm so freaking young, it's scary. <laughs> I still want to freaking learn. Learn, yeah. I want to continue just getting educated. And, you know, that's what's so cool about our industry is mm -hmm. it, I'm never, I don't want to ever put anything down. I don't want to put down anybody's job or anything, but there's a lot of jobs that you go out there. It's like you go in, you punch in, yeah, you do this. You just thing punch it. Mm -hmm. Hours will leave, but same thing, same thing, same yeah. thing, same thing. Our, our profession is different every time. All the time, right. It's not only has different personalities of the relationships. Mm -hmm. The relationships is, that's another part. That's just a huge thing for me. I love working with people. And I think, you know, a word for people to just sort of realize is get your people skills together. Yeah. Don't be afraid to socialize. Don't be afraid to talk, ask questions. Don't be a jerk. Don't be like some like <laughs> fake person. Don't be a right. fake person. No, be authentic. Be Absolutely. Yeah. Be real with the people you're talking with because they're yeah, 100%. all percent. I've I mean Absolutely. I've worked with some heavy hitters and some real big name people and they're all just regular people. Men, women, they're just awesome. And I just love that's good to know. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and, and going back to the, what we get to do, we're mixing sound. Sound is so subjective and it can be so different. Oh, absolutely. There's so many different scenarios. Mm. Lately, what I've been enjoying so much is trying new plugins. Mm, yes, like, workshopping, you know, as we the, say. The, yes. the youngsters of today, they go, oh, I got this new plugin, man, it's cool. I'm like, <laughs> and, and, and yes, then, what new plugin, exactly. And then on the flip side, I also like having my sort of old school raw basic approach to mixing because that's something that I think still stands up in it, time. Yes, it, yes. And just for, for those who are listening, just really quickly, briefly, when you say your your old school, you know, approach, what I what I interpret that as, because obviously we we've have a relation a working relation with each other, is the idea and the concept that we let the production live and that we don't want to suck too much life out of it. But once you kind of get all the elements in, the backgrounds, the foley, the music, then you kind of go in there and you shape. Is that what you're talking about? Yeah, yeah. There's different approaches. Yeah. A lot, some people go and they just take all the noise out thinking that they want mm -hmm. a crystal clear soundtrack. Right, and right. there are clients that sort of buy into that. They believe that. Uh, me, I need to have a soundtrack that has life, that mm -hmm. has every little breath of yeah. little taps you know little things right. that people clean out I can keep them in because well it's and it's real. noticeable it's real like you said it's real and when you listen to and, and and anybody who's watching this go listen to Jeff's work like I mean from 42 to Transformers to you know Tommy Boy like go listen to all of them you, you'll hear it um there's a life to it there's a character to it and so I think I think you're spot on and 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 j just check it out because it, it's 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 something to, to to learn from. I think. Well, the thing is too, if you um, you know, dialogue is your backbone. It's the spine of your film. Yeah. And 
the, you, you shape everything around that. Once you have the dialogue, no matter how noisy or, or if it's got some weird stuff in it, just put it in there and then you can, you can wrap stuff around it and it'll change a lot of things. It'll change right. its level. It'll Absolutely. change what you thought you were hearing and you're no longer hearing it anymore. And um, you know, I'm not looking to camouflage or mask anything, but a soundtrack is multiple, multiple layers. And uh, uh, so the curiosity part, it's still great to continue learning. Uh, the um, What were the other two, Joel? Uh, well, uh, hard work. You know, hard work is one of them. Th being, you just got to put your time in, right? Hard, okay. The hard work part. Let me tell you, there's times, you know, I mean, I'm sitting there. I've made plans. I'm ready to go home. It's coming to 7 o'clock. We're just like, we've had a long week. We've had a long yeah. day. Client comes up to us and says, hey, I just got a call. We've got to have this thing ready for tomorrow. Uh, everybody, we're going to bring in dinner, and you guys need to work overtime. And oh. you can't sit there and go, well, no, I got, I got a thing. I got to go. I got to go. to my, my girlfriend wants me to go out. We have to go out <laughs> and eat a freaking Chuck E. Cheese or uh, <laughs> Cheesecake Factory. Or, I, I, maybe maybe Cheesecake. Okay, um, sure. No, no. That, <sighs> a long time ago, I just there's just one word. Yes, sir. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And then we sit there, and as a, as a tight-knit group, the, the, the whole group's in it. The whole group's working hard. Yeah. Everybody's staying there. There's always one or two that want to leave. And you know, <laughs> say, all right, we got you covered. Go, go, take off. Yeah, then, yeah. We're not hacking anybody. Everybody has lives. I understand mm -hmm. that. But sometimes in the film industry, you have to make a sacrifice. And, uh, you know, that's part of the hard work. And what yeah. ends up happening with that is um, – you get a satisfaction at the end of the project. You've mm -hmm. been together with everybody and you look up on the screen and you hear what you guys have all just done. Yeah. And now you take a day off. <laughs> now you take it. Now you enjoy it and you just feel real good about yourself that you did the hard work and you didn't slack off on it. Uh, so that's three of them, Joel. What's the fourth? Yeah. Yeah. I love it. Uh, well, another one is credibility, you know, that over over our as we enter the industry, we have to understand that it's going to take time. But earning credibility through not only, you know, how we work, but our reputation, you, you, you become credible at some point. And you have to work at that. Yeah, no, it's a tricky one in there because this is where a lot of in this industry, this is where you need to, again, learn about like the politics of things. Mm, I mean, you've got that's, these a good one. that's a good point. That yeah, they want to see a stack of credentials they want credits they want a stack of credits right. on the desk they go hey this guy's mixed 350 movies but well, this guy's mixed two movies <laughs> yeah two yeah. Yeah, that was me in the beginning like how do you get credits i don't have credits help me but then they'll go well the guy that mixed 300 movies he's cost this much money and the guy that's mixed two he's this much oh let's get the guy with two <laughs> right. we can only <laughs> so afford it's, that it's a, it's a fine line depending on the project uh, -huh. uh you know you you are looking for that one opportunity where you can sort of, uh, you know, get get an opportunity to work with the big boys. Right. Uh, when that happens, you've cracked the code and you feel real good about it, and you get to put a name, uh, you know, that name up on your credit. You get to put that up on your credit. Right. So if somebody is investigating you and looking at you, they're mm. checking your credibility out. They're checking yeah. you know, if you've put in the time, if you've done the hard work mm -hmm. to get those credits. And I'm, yeah. you're not going to get the big ones right out of the gate. You need to have. Mm -hmm. the ones yeah small ones are you know gosh again uh freaking um the wuzzles gummy bears <laughs> you know yeah that's how it started for you right yeah and i love those cartoons they were freaking awesome and yeah inspector gadget you know yeah uh, that's right yes that's i love cool. it i love it well <laughs> uh, real quickly just uh, you know to that point like for me i didn't have credits and so it was Oh, well, we don't know. So what they do, they had to pair me with somebody who did have credits. And then it was like, okay, got one under my belt. We worked together, got another one under my belt. You know, and it's so like for you, the wuzzles and the gummy bears and the inspector gadgets, it's the same. It's like we all have to we slowly get there. And sometimes it might be pairing up with somebody to help you get those. Or you take something that, you know, does build your credit. So, um, but yeah, the next one was, I was talking about is perseverance and, and persistence. Like understanding that it's going to take time. Nothing happens overnight. You just got to, there's like this. I, I always equate it to hills and valleys. And sometimes you're in a valley for a while of your career, but eventually you get out of there. Yeah. And going backwards one notch, what you were just yeah. saying is, you know, just sort of experience with Joel. 
uh, Joel ha has had some opportunities with me where I've said, hey, uh, this is Joel. He's our effects mixer. He's going to be on the show. And then on that show, just, you know, full transparency, there's who, who's Joel? We don't know Joel. Yeah. Who's this guy? I, I don't think we can need Joel. I go, no, no, give, give Joel a shot. So yes. it yes. gave Joel Thanks. a shot. And this is the key to all of this. Joel had an opportunity to sink or swim. He took off his life preserver and he started freaking just <laughs> just swimming to shore. <laughs> <laughs> Here I go. <laughs> no, but that's the thing. Is this is true. This is true. You got to just make sure that you, you know, that you really do all the other things, the hard yeah. work, the, the mm -hmm. being creative. So, um, and the perseverance part is, yes, there's going to be a lot of, uh, you know, walls that maybe are going to come up, but you got to break through them and you've yeah. got to just have that patience and, you know, time can heal everything. Once mm -hmm. you get hurt because you lost a project that was so cool, right. before you know it, another cool project is going to be happening and you just, I like that, that yeah. in front of you, you put the negative stuff behind you. One foot in front of the other. I'm not going to go all cliche with any of it, but <laughs> you gotta keep moving forward, you know, and that's, uh, that's good. Important, important to do. Yeah. I, I always tell people, you know, get the nose out of the way. The nose are going to be there. So every no gets you closer to your yes. Cause eventually you get there and someone will say, eh, okay, why not? <laughs> you want, why not? Let's, let's give them a shot. Um, well, talk. I, this is your favorite. I think it's your favorite. And I think it's one of the biggest ones. But relationships. I'm a huge fan. And I try to constantly tell people to build authentic relationships. Because everything in this industry runs off I, 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 off of relationships. You look at all the directors out there. It's like, why do those people you know, constantly do you know, those films? It's like, you know... James Mangold has his team, you know, uh, uh, Steven Spielberg has his team. Relationships are huge. Talk about like how relationships have been a key component to, to your career. Yeah, no, you, when you get the opportunity to work with any filmmaker, I mean, the filmmaking team is a, you know, you get the producer, you got the director, you have the mm -hmm. picture editor, you have the music editor, the sound supervisor, you have the post supervisor, you have the head assistant, you have the runner, you have, there's so many people involved in any project. Uh, Joel and I have a show that we've done and the showrunner was an assistant to a director 25 years ago. A while ago. I right. was meeting the movie and he was the That's assistant right. to this director. I'm not named, right. him, but this is a big name director, dude. And now he's a freaking huge showrunner producer. And yeah, big we boss of the hot sauce. Mm -hmm. We joke about how this movie has our names on the credits. You know, I was a re-recording mixer at the time, and he was he was he was a director's assistant. That's right. And That's right. So one thing I learned a long, long time ago. This is going to be a very fast story again about Warren oh, Kleinman yeah. back at B and B Sound Studios. Warren Kleinman, take me back. Yeah, home, first homie, man, a guy I owe my life to. Every time I see mm -hmm. Warren, I come up to him, I hug him, I go, "I love you, Warren. <laughs> I owe everything to you." Um, so. B, B Sound, Ken Berger had two projectors in his house. Same thing, mm. the Carbon Arcs. He yeah. used to run movies in his house on the weekend. So mm -hmm. every Friday, the runner at BNB Sound, who was the projectionist, who was the uh, guy that did the, the mix tech, the recordist, he'd go to the movie studios and pick up a movie in these cans. You'd get these two cans. The, the, Goldberg, the Goldbergs. Goldberg yeah. can, and it would have yeah. six reels seven reels mm -hmm. depending on how long the movie was and i would pick them up and then bring them to ken he'd drive them home he'd run the movie so i would take the company car i'd go most of the time i'd go by myself the the early days of me going to pick up the movies warren went with me to sort oh, of okay. show me the ropes show you the I ropes right disney that was in burbank uh went to, to mgm uh which is now the sony lot in Culver City, right. I go to 20th Century Fox over the hill. So I drive, you know, again, this 20, I'm a freaking 22 year old kid who's never <laughs> stepped out of studio a lot. So I'm driving with Warren and, and we go to 20th Century Fox and we pull into the gate and the guard there says, what do you want? And Warren goes, hello, I'm going, coming to go into shipping to, to pick up a film print uh, for Ken Berger at B&B Sound. And, and the guy goes, all right, hold on a second. You know, he's real <laughs> salty, salty. Just mean. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm this young guy going, hey, man, shut up. I want to say, shut up, dude. Um, Warren's like, oh, well, thank you very much. You know, 
thank you. We'll go there. Yeah. And you know, and you have a really nice day. All right. Thanks. Okay. And then we drive and I go, Warren, why, why that guy was so mean. Why did you talk to him yeah. like that? He looked at me, he goes, you never know when you're going to meet that guy again in this industry. He may be running a studio one day. Mm -hmm. So you need to be nice to everybody you meet. That's not right. Only, not only his film industry. I, I'm like that anyway. And, in life in life yes no i mean i uh, so uh anyway it gets back to relationship. Good lesson you have all these people that you're working with you want to be mm -hmm. friends with all of them and i, I love yeah. everybody man i'm like i'm never i know guys that are that treat like the assistants not great because they're not the, yeah. the guy they're not like oh you're the editor oh, I'm gonna, right right I'm gonna, I'm gonna mm -hmm. hang out with you you know you're the director i'm only gonna mm -hmm. do talk to you i'm not gonna talk to him i like to talk to everybody and that's, I think, real important as far as establishing relationships. Yeah. Uh, I've been very fortunate. When you establish a relationship, what it ends up being is uh, you sort of created like a second, third, fourth family. Yes. And um, I've got some relationships that are in their, you know, 20, 30 year, uh, mm. you know, 30 years going strong. And they're still in the film business. Uh, a lot of people aren't. Love and it. Yeah, ones that that's are, true. You want them to call you, you know, if they don't call you, your feelings are hurt. You're like, wait a second. I thought we were Why friends. did you call me? Yeah, yeah. exactly. I get so, you. And, 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 and that's because what ends up happening is you, you can, um, you can gain trust, you know, that's mm, trust. Yeah, absolutely. If you can get trust with someone. Mm -hmm. Then you, you, you've achieved like one of the biggest goals because you want to do the, 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 the thinking and heavy lifting and, you know, you want to dig into mm -hmm. politics sometimes for them to not have to do it. You mm -hmm. want to shield your filmmaker. You want to you want to have that sort of uh, understanding that uh, he's asked. He's he's your friend. You feel his family, but he's also asking you to do something for him. Mm -hmm. You know, you, he's asking you to protect him. Mm -hmm. And that's the one thing that, you know, I've, I've I've sort of come to realize, too, is, you know, I don't want to always go crying to the to the head guy or to the film actors. <laughs> I want to try to solve the problem before it goes to him. And that's, I think, something that's important as far as establishing relationships, because again, that's all part of the, the whole trust world. Yeah. Hundred percent. Well, and relationships, you know, I, I love what you said, you know, so much about, you know, what we do is we we build these relationships with our filmmakers that turn into, you know, extensions of our family. You know, we spend more time in periods of the year with our sound teams when we're working, you know, on the stage or on a project than we do our, our normal families. And so having a relationship with filmmakers and people, crews that are just good people is a really important thing. You know, nobody wants to spend eight, 12 hours of the day with someone who's a grump or nobody likes, you know, cause that person, I mean, correct me if I'm wrong, but that person might get replaced <laughs> cause I want to work with nice people. I want to work with people that, you know, are just great human beings. They're awesome at what they do. And you know, you hit in, you hit, you hit the nail on the head, you know, they're, they're extensions, they're families. They're, 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 we spend a lot of time with them. So it's important to, to build those relationships. What would you say is one of the, um, best ways if someone's just starting out now to build relationships in this industry what would you say um you know having the having the motivation and persistence to to try to get into a sound uh editor's world mm. or, mm -hmm. see, you, you can't go knock on a door at a director's house and say hey I'm right god i want to yeah. i want i want to be your guy <laughs> uh, you need to be, get some trust with, um, you know, some someone in the sound editorial or sound mixing world. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Joel okay, and I have yeah. opened our doors to people to come in and visit. And That's we've, true. you know, given some of our input on stuff that we're doing as re-recording mixers. But, mm -hmm. you know, in the sound world, there are a lot of different facets there because recording sound is a, is, is, is a, 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 a separate art because number one, it's a lot of fun and you get to go out in the desert and, you yeah. know, or guns or, or cars. Things up. Or yeah, exactly. Or, um, you know, and a, a, a sound editorial company has, uh, I think a little, you know, some, some opportunities to 
get into that if that's mm -hmm. something you're interested in. I mean, sound again is so many different things. It's doing the editorial for let's just say dialogue. That's an art in itself. Yep, doing fully editing, doing just recording fully, going out recording live sound effects. You know, when you're just getting started, you know, you do record your record yourself on on a YouTube video of uh, you know lighting off some bottle rockets and hearing the sounds of the little yeah, yeah. and go to the beach and you know I. I I don't record a lot of stuff, but I, you know, record on my iPhone and something that I'm still so proud of my, you know, m many, many years ago, a recording of uh, uh, my wife and I were at this uh, resort and we were down walking on the beach and this beach had, it wasn't sand. It was like pebbles. They were, they were the water. Mm, yeah. Okay. Rock. Yeah. It was rock, yeah, rock. And the water where the water came up was all these little freaking shiny pebbles and the water comes up. And then when it went back, there was this very unique sound of the water rushing through the pebbles. It wasn't yeah. a shh. It was a you know, it was like a pop. Yeah, had, had texture to it. Right, right. Snaps and pops because it was going through the rocks. And I had my phone with me and I recorded it and videotaped it. Oh, that's good. Yeah. I gotta find that. I gotta find it. <laughs> but anyway, there's a lot of opportunities to, you know, do that. And I'd say, you know, try to start with um some sound editorial houses yeah reaching out to them right right it is a good beginning i love it i love it well i i think it's been great to kind of hear a little bit about where you you know where you started and i think in your story i mean i, I could I, I tell so many people now online and social media you know i try to preach this idea of like not only relationships but hard work and going out there and you you kind of come from that old school of like just you didn't go to school for it just similar like, like me i didn't go to school for it either um but i th i believe that we are testaments to the idea that if you take these principles you can apply them that anybody can do it i mean look look i always say that like if i can do it you can do it trust me you know go just go out there meet people work hard make mistakes learn uh to kind of wrap up our time what would you what kind of what what do you know now that you wish you knew when you were first starting in in, in the industry that anybody that who's listening maybe starting their journey could kind of take uh take away from it you know my situation is very unique about not knowing anything and just getting thrown in and you know it was also back at a time where uh you people weren't mixing movies in their garage. One guy does everything. He right, cuts the right. sound, he mixes it, he gives it to the clients, he bids lower than other people do it. <laughs> well, I was more of a time where there was a lot of crews, there was a lot of sound people. But that yeah. being said, don't let that, you know, don't let that distract you or deter you. Because what what now the way that the whole sound world is, is the Pro Tools that's right behind Joel, those those pieces of equipment basically contain everything. They've got all the sound that you're going to need. Yeah. You need to basically know those machines inside out. The mix techs that are very computer literate and very savvy, uh, those are the guys that move forward and ultimately can mix because they understand those machines. They know the, they know the bones. They got to go deep mm -hmm. and I know that a lot of people are going to schools and learning and Pro Tools is part of that um, course. You know, it's, it's probably yeah. uh, course one, day one. 101. <laughs> learn how to work the Pro Tools. Ha having that knowledge mm -hmm. is a great thing. And I'm very fortunate because, you know, I met Joel about eight years ago and we and I, and I got this opportunity to, you know, the, the movie business was getting a little slower and the streaming business was exploding. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I didn't want the opportunity to uh get into that part of the industry. And at the time I wasn't really a mix in the box guy. I was a mix on top of the console guy. Right. Right. Uh, mix text that sat there and set up my whole desk for me. I mean, I'd walk in at nine o'clock, hit the forward button. They'd be there at eight o'clock setting up, setting all the up. Track, mm -hmm. labeling everything. And they'd say, Jeff, you got the green light go. And then I sit there and roll and I go, Hey, you know, remember there was that one thing that you could put on a track and it could kind of make the noise go away. Can you yeah. put that on this? Can you track? do that, they right? They come in and they do it. And see, I didn't want that anymore. I wanted to be self-contained. I wanted to be self-contained and know how to do the mixing in the box part. Yeah. 
yeah. and, and Joel and some other sound editors, you know, helped me. And I brought just some of my old school know-how to yeah. that particular, you know, the projects we were working on. But the number one thing for me is I wanted to learn. I wanted to master that. I want to be better mm-hmm. at that Pro Tools and all these young whippersnappers that come in and go, <laughs> oh, we can mix through the Pro Tools like that. I go, yeah, that's well, I right. Pro Tools also. Yeah, watch it. I could do it. And to 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 your testament you now, to 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 your to go back to the principles, your curiosity, right? I would say is what has I believe it fuels our learning. And to Jeff's credit, you know, coming in, you should have seen him. I talk about always having a journal or a notebook, and this gentleman right here he was there with his notebook he hold on i want to learn how to do it you know and and it was just like it was a new it was a new um there it uh, is face there it is there's your notebook exactly i love it i love it that's the one jeff's bad and in that was the beginning of learning look at that see i got some stuff about you know you know how how to import you the euphonics the euphonics (laughs) bucket reset okay (laughs) Yeah, so I'm gonna I, I, you change. Screen, I love it. Idea, you read, yeah, yeah. The you find. Yep, and that, it's you know, there. The, besides Pro Tools, you know, you've got the, the mixing consoles. You got all this other stuff going on. Um, I love it. I love it. Uh, and that's it. So you are that. I mean, that he he practices with preach in the sense that I've I've seen it. I've seen it, and it it's that curiosity. So I always stay stay curious. We don't ever want to lose that curiosity as we even, you know, as we, we have a storied career such as yours, you know, don't don't stop learning because uh, those who stop learning stop. <laughs> well, stop. we were just, again, sort of wrap this thing up. We were working on a project a few weeks ago and uh, we're going to continue it. And at, towards the end of the project, uh, mm-hmm. I, it was brought to my attention by another colleague who I respect, who's like a Pro Tools beta tester guy. And mm-hmm. I asked him, hey, what do people use for this or that? Some dialogues, what do you, how do you get rid of some this or get rid of some, you know, stuff. And, and he gave me a couple names of some plugins. And, you know, because again, we're very fortunate we get to work in an environment where these plugins can be available to us. Yeah. And mm-hmm. there's nobody just like yelling at us, telling us to hurry up. Hurry up. We just take a minute and we workshop a plugin. And I found this new plugin, and I was like a freaking Joel. No, he was right there. I was like a kid in a candy store. I'm, you oh, were. Should you I say were, the name of the were. plugin, Joel? You, yeah, of course. Hush. You can do it. Hush. Hush. Yeah, Hush. Yeah, Go check hey, it out. Whoever's with Hush, Hush, I'm endorsing you. You come. <laughs> you, 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 you stop. No, anyway, yeah. anyway it, was, it was a very simple plugin, and I tested yeah. it out, and it I was, really it liked good. it. And I started like right there on the spot mm-hmm. implementing that into my chain as opposed to being this hard-headed guy that's like, oh, no, I only use the stuff that I yeah, always only use. this, right. I only know it, it, it works. I love trying new stuff, and that's what's so fun still about what we what we get to do. Yeah. Well, it's, uh, you know, it's it's been a pleasure to work alongside you, and I know we've talked about doing this interview for quite some time and, and you being the inaugural uh, episode, so thank you for sharing your your time your wisdom with all of us um i thought about doing like a a, a fun like 60 second like flash you know round but uh i I didn't i didn't prep good enough so (laughs) we'll have to do that next time you know i was like what's your favorite movie you know what's your favorite movie actually i'll just tell you of all the projects you've been part of we'll just end it like this what's one of those one or two that just and it could just be one or two but that really sticks to you that you're like that was something special uh, you know, I always kind of do go back to 42. Mm, uh, that was a good director one. is a really good friend. And, you know, yeah, Brian, Brian mm-hmm. baseball because I'm a sports guy. But then I flip Dude. right over to remember the Titans. Again, oh, said, yeah, come on. That's so good, too. Gosh, uh, there's too many. And, and great filmmakers attached to that. Um, yeah. And, uh, yeah, there's, you know, I'm again, I'm a real lucky guy. But as far as favorite movies, I like, I love like Predator. And t- I didn't mix that. Predator okay, Predator. I love it. There was not going to be another my question. Which what movie do you wish you mixed? <laughs> Predator. Terminator, there you go. Terminator. 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 Awesome. Uh, yeah. I wish I mixed uh, whatever movie wins Best Picture every year. <laughs> I mean, no, wins. I'm sorry, wins Best Sound. Best Sound. I knew what you meant. Yes, yes, I get it. Well, but thanks, Jeff. For appreciate your time and um, yeah. If if uh, if you want to learn more, go check out all the projects that he's worked on because uh, they're, they're sonic masterpieces. So thanks, Jeff. Appreciate you. Good working with you too. Also, Joel, I'm having a great time and I'm glad we got to do this.